Hi, welcome to my craft room. Carol Gatton, your Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and we're going to take a look at reverse masking. You can punch out your opening, or you can use any of the framelit dies. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it here today. This is a piece of the white cardstock. I practice on a scrap of paper before I ever start. I think that most valuable tip I can give you today is practice before you start. On this, I'm going to be cutting out my opening. I want it to be the same at the top and sides, and a little bit more space here down at the bottom. We will cut that out, and normally this would be your mask, but we're doing reverse masking, so we're going to set that aside and we're going to use the back portion that we would normally just toss out. So this is our mask. Line it up with your card. I like to do it the same size as my card, then I'm not sponging out of my area and, and hitting my cardstock. I'm using the two-way glue pen. Let that dry thoroughly, and then you would secure that onto your card front. And I'll just put it on here so you can see that's exactly what I did. Now I'm using just some scraps of card stock and that's not the normal thing I would use. This is kind of heavy, but this is gonna work because I'm making a whole bunch of these cards for a swap that I've got coming up. You want to work your way down and have yourself narrow line and that blue is going to turn to clear when it's completely dry and it has to be completely dry. Here's our grid paper and these are little quarter inch marks on this paper so it makes it so easy to work with. And Then when they get old and grungy I even use them for practicing my my techniques on. Line this up and then line it up with that black line and then get it even at the bottom and you want a lead pencil, something that's not going to be too dark. And once you see that you've got it all lined up, go across that with your pencil. I recommend once. I'm only doing it twice so that it's easier for you to see. And then I, this ruler is two inches wide, so I'm putting that right on that line, making sure that everything is nice and even, and I'm going to make my second line. And this is where we're going to be working at, is right here. Now here's the trick to working with this two-way glue pen so that it works like a post-it note. You want to remove a little bit of that tackiness. Don't overdo it, but uh, just do it a couple of times and that, and then you're going to match that up perfectly. And these are the colors that I chose to go with. I mean, we are so lucky that we have all these wonderful ink colors that we can work with. And this So Saffron is absolutely one of my favorites for sponging. If, if it's a color you don't already have, it's one you want. Start with the So Saffron and you're going to see that I'm working all around the left side, but not on the right side. And let me show you why. When you start, you want to have in mind where you want your light spots at. And here I have a couple, that are, but one that is really more dominant. Next, I'm bringing in the Crush Curry, and you see that I tapped off before I started. And I'm doing half of my sponging on my mask, and half of it is on my paper. Literally, I want to get rid of most of this ink before I go into certain areas. Once that, once that is almost empty of ink, then I'll work my way over to the right side. I am bringing in the delightful Dijon. This is a color that just really makes it. I mean, I'm using it very sparingly, and that's what I recommend for you. It just adds those deep earth tones that are needed, and I don't have a lot on my sponge, and I'm, I'm tapping off before I ever bring the color even to my area. Next, we're working with the pumpkin pie, and this is just a perfect earthy tone. I just love it. As you can see, I sponged off, and then I'm working from my mask into the area that I'm coloring. I'm getting as much on my mask as I am on the area that I'm coloring. I want to start, and as you can see, that I'm concentrating right on that area that I want to be my darkest spot. A little tip to removing these is bring them forward. The bulk of the glue is right where that's securing, right to your paper. This will prevent you from tearing your paper. Now you want to erase those lines. Do not use a pencil eraser. It, it can really mess up your card. And once you've got it made this far, you definitely don't want to mess it up.
I have added my mask back onto my cardstock and now I'm going to start with the so saffron because it's my lightest color and I want to to get that that soft background so you can see that I am stamping it several times and I'm putting a little bit of force to it because this is a light color now the next color that I'm going to bring in is going to be my delightful Dijon and barely you can see I'm barely touching down on with this I do not want to have this too dark okay so now the pumpkin and I'm really touching down that first time and then you're going to see me use a little bit more power on the, the stamp each time because I, I I want some of that orange but I don't want it to be strong and wow, do you have this wetland set? Oh my gosh, it's such a nice one. I just made this card for my pastor. And it's got wonderful verses that come with it. It has a man in his life that loves the out of doors. This is a great one. The first thing I have done is I have positioned my goose. And you're able to tip it, position it any way you want it. I want it so that the head is a little bit above where I have done my coloring. I am inking this up with stays on and I'm going to press down lightly. I want to match this up in the arm of my stamp -a jig and bring it up and then let it slide down onto your cardstock. Do not move that arm because you're going to be redoing it again. I'm making sure that it's still matched up right where I want it. I'm re-inking it. And I didn't use very much force at all the first time because I didn't want I didn't want all these great details to, to be smudged. I want them to be nice and clear. Now I'm so happy because this has turned out just the way I wanted it. I wanted the body portion to not have enough color so that I could show you what you do. You're not stuck if it if it turns out like this. You can put your mask back on and this is the crushed curry. I'm adding a little bit of that lighter yellow in there and then next I'm going to bring in the delightful Dijon and I'm making a mound that my goose is standing on. Can you see how I'm kind of shaping that like a mound? And I'm always working off of my mask onto my cardstock. And then I'm going to add just a little bit more. There's very little left in this sponge, but I'm just going to add just little strokes and there'll be very little then go out onto that. And that's what I'm working for. Now next I am going to work with my pumpkin again. And this time, that's the color that I really need. But let me just really draw to your attention. You're always working off of the mask down into the area you're coloring. Do not take that pumpkin and just do the belly area because it would be too strong and wouldn't blend as well. You want that to be well blended. Now I have a little bit more of the Dijon because I just want a little more earthy tone to it. So I'm, I'm squeezing my sponge. And then I am going to tap it off and then I am just doing some light strokes, very light strokes. Hope you will try this technique. It, it is absolutely my favorite. It costs me nothing to do because I have the ink pads, I have the sponges, and it just lights up whatever I'm trying to sponge around. Be sure and let me know if you try this. I really hope you will. And until next time, I want to thank you so much.